What if everything you've been told about AI stealing your job is totally backwards? While everyone's freaking out about robots taking over, the CEO of the most valuable tech company on earth just dropped a truth bomb that nobody really wants to admit. So Jensen Huang ju didn't just disagree with the doom and gloom predictions. He called them out as fundamentally wrong. So are we witnessing the biggest career opportunity misdirection in tech history? Is the fear of AI job loss actually blinding us into the greatest software engineering gold rush since the internet boom? And why is the man who literally powers every AI system on the planet telling us that now is a good time to double down on coding? Let's dive into all this today because I've definitely got some thoughts on these ones today. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right. So AI panic is reaching a fevered pitch, right? But what if everybody and these big CEOs have it all wrong, right? Jensen Huang, who's the in, uh, CEO of NVIDIA, just shattered the narrative that AI will destroy developer jobs and that and the data backs him up in ways that I'm gonna break down for you today. So I'm gonna break it down, talk about why software engineers' jobs aren't going any way, anywhere and where I think they're actually about to hit the golden age. So let's dive into some of these articles here and I can, and I can break this down for you. So NVIDIA, NVIDIA CEO slams Anthropic's chief over his claims of AI taking half of jobs and being unsafe. Don't do it in darkroom and tell me it's safe. Huang believes that AI technologies will open more career opportunities in the future, right? So I'm sure everybody's heard Anthropic CEO say that AI could cause up to 20% of unemployment within five years. He then doubled down and actually went up to saying that it could wipe out a staggering of 50% of all entry level white collar jobs. Now he's making all these loud claims and of course he is because what's he trying to do? He's trying to sell like this is the CEO of Anthropic. He's trying to sell his stock, right? I get it. He's trying to hype it up, be like, oh, you better buy in or else you're going to miss out because we're going to be the one who has all the jobs, right? You know, so I get what he's trying to do here. But let's kind of break down what Huang says. He says, so first of all, he said, Huang disagrees with Amadi's approach uh, predictions when he asked about it during uh, the te a recent Viva Tech conference. And he said he's pretty much disagrees with almost everything the Anthropic CEO says, right? One, he believes that AI is so scary that only they, Anthropic, should do it. Two, that AI is so expensive nobody else should do it. And three, AI is incredibly powerful that everyone will lose their job, which explains why they should be the only company building it, right? So he's totally mocking them here. I think AI is very important technology. We should build it and advance it safely and responsibly. If you want things done safely and responsibly, you do it in the open. You don't do it in a dark room and tell me it's safe. Now, he's going on and knocking on them here because one, he's saying they're the only ones who are saying that they could be able to do it. But um, Anthropic Loren resp responded to him and says that he never claimed that they were the only ones safe to build it, right? So they're trying back and forth. So we see this back and forth between these two. And I just think it's really comical, right? But Huang went on to agree that, you know, some jobs might become obsolete, but then in every single t case, we see jobs continue to, to increase. Now, I'm going to bounce through a couple of different topics today. So I'm going to show you some of the articles, but this is just a few of the things that I'm, I'm reading through here. So recently, Y Combinator actually said for their summer 2020, they said it's going to be the year of AI agents, and they actually said they want majority of the people coming in to be full stack AI companies. This means they want people to be developers who not only know how to use AI, but also know how to build on AI. So this just is more of a reason that you should be a software developer who knows how to build on top of AI. I'm going to touch a little bit about this, that now might be the best time to learn software development. I'm going to go a little further and say, I believe now is the great time. We're going to go through and I'm going to go through some of these other articles in here as I as I talk through this today. So remember that the, in the famous tw 2013 Oxford study claimed that 40 per, 47% of jobs would vanish due to automation. Well, okay. That was 2013. It's been over a decade, and we can definitely say that we still haven't done this. So they actually need to grade their homework, right? Because they totally failed and they're getting an F. Now, the study predicted that tax preparers, insurance underwriters, and data entry clerks would be extinct by now. That was 2013, right? They said it would be extinct over the next five years. We're still here. And that's even with the explosion of AI that we've seen just in the last couple of years. Now, according to the Information Technology and Inf Innovation Foundation, there's zero correlation between predic predicated job automation risk and actual job loss that has occurred. 
The methodology has fundamentally flawed. They, incurred, uh, they include occupations like fashion models, school bus drivers, and barbers as high automation risk, which is totally laughable when you actually think about it. So this pattern repeats itself through history. Steam engines didn't create mass unemployment. Computers didn't eliminate half of all the jobs, and ATMs actually increased the number of bank tellers. This is why we see this pattern happen over and over again. The lesson here is clear. Technology transforms work rather than destroying it. And AI is following the exact same playbook. Now, Y Combinator, as I was pointing out here, just revealed that their hand in the most dramatic way. 80% of their latest startup batch is AI focused with 47% being pure AI agent companies. Who do you think is building that? The software developers, right? This isn't just a trend, it's a complete transformation. So we're seeing uh, Y Combinator CEO, Gary Tran dropped a, a mind blowing statistic for about 25% of their current start startups, 95% of the code they have are working with AI. So these companies are reaching $10 million in revenue with team, with smaller teams, but doing more. That's what I've been saying. This is going to lower the bar to be able to raise the potential. You're going to see people who, the right people who know how to use technology and use AI wisely and safely be able to build with it faster. That doesn't mean that the other jobs are going to disappear. Now, NVIDIA CEO just publicly dismantled Anthropic CEO's uh, prediction that all AI will eliminate 50% of entry level white collar jobs. He, he went on to say, you're not going to lose your job to AI, but you're going to lose your job to somebody who uses AI. That's like literally, I think he stole my quote, guys, because like I've been saying that for a couple for over a year now on this channel here, right? He's literally been saying, I tell my developers all the time, you're not going to lose your job to AI, but you might lose it to a developer who knows how to use AI. He literally stole my quote, guys. We should go after him. I'm kidding. But this perfectly captures the perfect reality. AI is becoming a powerful tool that software engineers need to learn how to use. So I get a lot of hate out on the channel, people being like, you're negative to AI, you hate on AI. No, I'm an AI realist, right, guys? I, AI is not going... LLMs aren't going anywhere. I hate the term AI because it's not really a sentient, sentient being. AI gives the, the drift towards AGI and towards it being a sentient being. LLMs are really powerful technology. They're not going to go anywhere. We're going to want to learn how to use these, right? But I think this is going to perfectly capture this, right? AI is becoming a powerful tool that we can use. Huang advocates for open AI development rather than secretive approaches favored by some companies saying, don't do it in a dark room and tell me it's safe. What he's pu pushing for there is he's pushing for open source LLMs and open source AI tools and open standards. Anthropic stuff's all closed. They're not releasing their models. They're not releasing all, all uh, any of their tools that they're building. Now, they are a big champion of MCP, but other than that, not pretty closed company. So that was a little dig at them, right? There's some shots being fired back and forth here. Now, NVIDIA sells hardware that powers AI. So I get that also <laughs> Huang's trying to sell some more a hardware, right? Right? He wants more people building uh, software on AI. It, to him, it's better to get developers. I get that everybody has kind of a motivation behind this, but I'm with Huang on this one, right? Because here's the counterintuitive truth that most people are going to miss. When companies become more productive through technology, they historically hire more people, not fewer. I know that there's this, this thought process out there that CEOs are sitting there thinking, oh, if I can just get more revenue and sit on my piles of money. No, generally what they do is they get that piles of money and they deploy it out into new projects. That's traditionally how capitalism works. Huang points this pattern out explicitly. Whenever companies are more productive, they hire more people. That's a direct quote from him. And the data consistently backs that up. So look at what happened during previous technology waves, right? The internet created millions of jobs that didn't exist before, from web developers to social media managers to many other things. AI is going to follow the same pattern, but at a different scale, right? At a larger scale. We're seeing entirely new job categories emerge around prompt engineering, AI training, and agent orchestration. At, at all the companies that I'm working at, they're wanting to do more with AI tools. I'm, my... Uh, the, my pipeline is actually getting more full as I talk about AI agents and about building on top of AI, not less. And I know all you guys are hating on me out there saying I hate AI. Quite the opposite. I'm literally growing my business around it. The World Economic Forum predicts that while AI may display some roles, it will create 2.6 million new jobs in AI and machine learning by 2027 alone. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems, especially if you're looking at great ways to integrate really safe and good ways to integrate AI. 
reach out to us at startuppack.com slash Spencer because we'd love to help you out. Now, the role of software engineers isn't dis disappearing. It's totally evolving. Y Combinator identified AI software engineering team as the major bet where, human man where humans manage teams of a lot of uh, different AI coding tools as well as building on top of AI. Now, this represents a fundamental shift in the developer role, but I've seen this shift over and over again. I know in the early 2000s, everything was Web 2.0. Web developers got killed off by Web 2.0, right? No, they had to evolve. So the bottleneck in software creation is shifting from writing code to designing system and managing some AI tools along the way to help make them more efficient. Companies need engineers who understand both traditional software architecture and how to leverage AI capabilities. So while everyone obsesses over AI replacing developers, there's a massive shortage of engineers who can actually build and maintain AI systems. This is our opportunity. Why Combinator is desperately seeking, desperately seeking startups that can accelerate AI infrastructures. The irony here is thick. We need more software engineers to build the AI systems that are supposedly going to replace the software engineers. But we all know the difference, right? I've had multiple people comment on my channel here over the last few months where they've talked about being mainframe developers that were told all through the 90s and into the 2000s they were going to be replaced. And yet in 2025, those mainframe developers are actually in higher demand than ever before. The talent gap between elite AI practitioners and average implementation teams is wider than most executive realize. Go look at the massive amounts of money that Mark's, that is re being reported that Mark Zuckerberg is trying to throw at other AI engineers to poach him away from some of these big companies. The shortage isn't resolving quickly. It's going to take a long time. Now, Y Combinator predicted that we're going to approach, you know, some uh, some places where AI is going to be integrated into all of our different uh, software. But they're comparing it to the stock market where humans and algorithms tr work together to continue to build things. So there's a technical, cha technical challenge here, right? And we're going to see the early movers who understand both traditional architecture and agent-specific requirements and build this up together. So here's what the doomsayers are getting wrong. AI doesn't simplify software development. It makes it exponentially more complex and specialized. You're gonna need engineers who understood all the old stuff, but now understand prompt and optimization, model selection, fine tuning, vector databases, retrieval augmented generation, and agent orchestration, just to name a few of them. And if those buzzwords don't hit the SEO, then I don't know what will, right? But the integration challenge are massive, right? Most developers don't even know half of those things. So if you get developers who understand the old former architectures and now bring in these new technologies and can figure out how to build them because we're going to need to connect all of our old systems, AI is not going to do that for you. One of the things that pretty universally everybody will tell you, AI does not do well with legacy code. That's going to require humans. AI can do some decent jobs at writing some very boilerplate code and maybe some proof of concepts, but nothing that would hit production and nothing that's going to go grab an old massive code base and do anything with it. So every AI feature requires careful monitoring and careful integration. So we're seeing new specializations emerge and this is going to be, you know, what we're going to see constantly. We're going to see DevOps trying to integrate with AI. We're going to see prompt engineers now trying to merge with REST APIs. We're going to see AI safety engineers, which is going to be a whole new category of things. There's going to be model optimization and, and specialists. So rather than reducing the need for engineers, AI is creating more specialized engineering roles than ever before. Let's look at this for a minute. Is XAI reducing its number of developers. They're one of the leading, arguable or not, they're one of the top five to 10 leading uh, AI companies, and yet they're massively trying to hire. There's a massive demand out there right now among all the different frontier AI companies fighting over the software developers to try to be the ones uh, to, to get these software developers here. So just the same way that was predicted in 2013 that you know 47% of job loss would happen from AI, and again, that was 2013. This is from Oxford, so this wasn't like a, a hearsay thing. We are now seeing more demand for software developers than ever before. Now, a lot of people being like, oh, but it's taking jobs out there. No, interest rates have taken more jobs from software developers right now than AI has. And anybody who wants to try to show me any numbers to prove otherwise, I've got a bunch of other numbers to back it up. Why Combinator is betting big. Every company is betting big. There's a reason NVIDIA is, at, is saying this. They don't want to be scaring people away from software developer. 
every major technology wave has followed the similar pattern pattern initial fear followed by massive job creation in new categories that didn't exist before the bureau of labor statistics shows that no correlation between ai exposure and job decline in fact many ai exposed occupations are growing faster than average so while you might see a slight decrease in some software engineering roles right now because of those interest rates i talked about AI engineering is at over 250% year over year increase. Where do you think those jobs are going? Companies that tried to eliminate engineers to replace with AIs are realized really quickly that that wasn't going to work. I don't even know of that many that actually pulled the trigger on it. Real opportunity isn't fighting AI. It's becoming an engineer who knows how to architect, deploy, scale, and integrate with AI systems. So in my decades of experience, I've learned that engineers who adapt to new tools early always come out ahead. So be one of those guys, jump in, dive in. I've got tons of playlists to show you how to start to dive into learning some of it, but get out there and start learning. While others are arguing about whether AI is gonna take their jobs, smart engineers are already building the AI powered companies of tomorrow. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree, do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion, so make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies, as well as to train up software developers. So reach out to us uh, at startuphack.com slash Spencer, and here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.